The space industry is growing and exciting because of the exciting discoveries in space, in the outer planets, and especially in exoplanets, that we are not alone in the universe. The Center for Materials of the Universe, part of Arizona State University, is a new center that I'm leading. I'm Alexandra Navratsky, Alex for short. The center's mission is to foster research and collaboration, not just at ASU, but among many institutions, to bring together science and engineering, to further our understanding of space, our use of space, and technological advances. My research deals with the stability of materials in a thermodynamic sense that's uh, technical. In a practical sense, one wants to know whether materials can form, whether they persist, and what they tell us about the environment, the conditions under which they formed. Uh, my name is Arunima Singh and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Physics here at ASU. At the center, I'll be using ab initio simulations to study the uh, possible structures which could exist on exoplanets. Uh, these are new conditions. Uh, we have extremely hazardous conditions on the exoplanets, extreme temperatures and pressures which can only be probed using computations. But also we can perform control experiments in lab but they're prohibitively expensive and time-consuming. And the computations allow us to map a very huge complex phase space, uh, studying millions of structures. In the next 10 to 20 years, our hope as a group uh, in the center of the materials of the universe is to map the planetary genome. We want to be able to map out uh, the structure and properties of materials which could exist on these exoplanets and in the universe. I'm Scott Sayers. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Molecular Sciences. So my research lab is an ultra-fast laser lab, which means we use lasers to study chemical reactions and dynamics. We are developing new spectroscopic tools to push the time limits to shorter and shorter time scales, where we're now able to see electron dynamics in their native time scale. And this gives us access to all sorts of new information for materials. In the future, I believe that we're going to be able to make new materials and coatings out of depositing clusters onto a surface. And so instead of having a surface that has a couple of catalytically active sites, we're going to be able to make this entire material chemically active and be able to retain those properties, those unique properties that we observed uh, from the individual cluster sites. My name is Dan Shem. I'm a mineralogist and I'm a high pressure experimentalist. So I have a uh, um, lab that studies materials at high pressure and high temperature conditions of the Earth interior and other planets. So planetary interiors are one of the hardest regions to understand because we cannot get that data directly. Um, I simulate the pressure temperature conditions of the deep interior in the lab. For the next 10 or 20 years, I will enjoy studying a very wide pressure temperature range, very wide compositional range to be able to understand the planets that we never have thought about before. My name is Joseph O'Rourke. I am a planetary scientist and my research focuses on phenomena that originate deep within the interiors of planets. My research is exciting because it focuses on big picture questions about Earth and other planets in our solar system and beyond. Why does Earth have plate tectonics? Why does Earth have a magnetic field? These large-scale planetary processes are essential to understanding why our surface is habitable. So we are entering a new era of planetary exploration. Most of NASA's past spacecraft missions have focused on the most easily observable parts of planets, their surfaces and their atmospheres. But uh, the new generation of NASA missions is focused on collecting data about the interiors of planets. The NASA InSight mission is probing the interior of Mars. The NASA Psyche mission, led by ASU, is going to the remnant core of an ancient protoplanet. And so we are starting to gather new data about the interiors of planets, which makes understanding the properties of materials even more of a pressing need. I'm Hilary Ellen Hartnett, and I'm Associate Professor in the School of Earth and Space Exploration and the School of Molecular Sciences. I'm a geochemist. I also answer to oceanographer and astrobiologist, but my work is to understand carbon and nitrogen cycling on the Earth. And in particular, I'm interested in how minerals catalyze organic reactions in Earth systems. The collaboration between material scientists mineral physicists and geochemists can explore the conditions and the chemical properties that might be present on exoplanets. Nobody thinks that organic chemists will be able to tell us something about pH, or temperature, or redox chemistry for a planet around another star, but I think we're going to be able to do that. 
The Center for the Materials of the Universe has nothing less than the vision of understanding the universe. We envision that the connections with material scientists and geochemists and even astrophysicists is going to allow us to think about new, creative, interdisciplinary ways to explore planets that we can't go to yet. So we hope to grow, we hope to thrive.